Executive Director of the Community Environmental Council. Our two organizations partnered with Get Oil Out and the UCSB Environmental Studies Program to host this event today. Union Oil's Platform A off the coast of Santa Barbara caused a blowout that unleashed more than 4 million gallons of heavy crude oil into the ocean and onto our coast beaches. Over the next days, weeks, and months, the massive oil slick spread through the Santa Barbara Channel, onto the islands, and onto beaches from Goleta to Ventura. At the time, the spill was the worst in the nation's history and quickly became the spill heard around the world. The response to this catastrophe was dramatic from the streets of Santa Barbara to the halls of Congress. Dignitaries, political activists, senators, and even President Nixon came out to bear witness. People who had not considered themselves activists came out to protest. And soon, some of the first community-based regional environmental organizations in the U.S. started to form. The ones that Linda mentioned earlier, Get Oil Out, Community Environmental Council, and Environmental Defense Center. As well, one of the first environmental studies programs at a major university in the United States also formed at UCSB. All of this gave voice to a new approach at least for modern times, to think of our world as a living, interconnected system. By the spring of 1970, people around the nation were gathering together and supporting each other for the first Earth Day, an event that continues to this day in Santa Barbara as one of the largest, most consistently held Earth Days around the country. Within a couple of years after the oil spill, the modern environmental movement had been born. And within a year of the spill, Congress passed the first major environmental protection laws in the nation, starting with the National Environmental Policy Act, and President Nixon established the Environmental Protection Agency. Shortly thereafter, a host of other laws were passed by Congress and signed by President Nixon with broad bipartisan support, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act, and in California, the California Coastal Act, which was signed by Republican President Reagan. While tremendous progress was made following the Santa Barbara oil spill, that did not stop other similar disasters, such as the Exxon Valdez tanker spill and the Deepwater Horizon explosion. More recently, in 19, and, excuse me, more recently in 2015, an onshore pipeline carrying crude oil produced from our offshore platforms ruptured near Gaviota causing oil to spread 150 miles down our coast all the way to Manhattan Beach. These disastrous and inevitable consequences of oil development make it all the more urgent that we stay vigilant in the face of continued threats, including today the Trump administration's proposal to open more than 90% of the nation's coasts, including the entire California coast, to new offshore oil drilling. <laughs> we are also called to respond to an even greater crisis 50 years later, the effect of fossil fuel production and consumption on our climate. Here in Santa Barbara, higher temperatures, extended droughts, year-round fire seasons are the types of climate change impacts that we are experiencing and that are linked to catastrophic disasters like the 2017 Thomas Fire and the 2018 Debris Floats. Among the many lessons that we can take away from the 69 oil spill is how the community responded. Those who were involved talked not just about the devastation, but about the pride and the connection that came from working together to solve the problem. Some of the environmental heroes have passed on, but some are here today. I'm going to read a short list of just a few. Bud Bottoms, Lois Capps, George Clyde, Hal Conklin, Carla Frisk, Sue Higman, Phil Martin, J.B. McCrimmon, 
Mark McGinnis, Marianne Mott, 